Hey TD Superheroes, my name is Alana Perez and I'm your sidekick. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how to create a control that we can later on build out for each different item that we want to control like the brows, the eyes, the nose. We can expand this and make various custom controls if we wanted to but I want to create one right now that we can use for multiple different things. So right now with the face rig what we have so far, if we click on the face, we've imported the blend shapes and we got the blend shapes working. Right now it's not connected to any other geometry, so if I move it, it's going to rip everything apart, but we'll get to that eventually. So in order to work on the controls, I'm going to open up another tab and we'll create a function for it. And I'm creating a Python tab here. And then with this function, we'll bring it into the main script and then work on it from there. So maya.cmds as mc. So let's create a function, define, create, ctrl. Okay, so we're creating the control here. And uh, this doesn't do anything, it just creates a function for creating the control. And then what we are going to do in here is start creating curves. So if we expand here, we'll create it down on the grid. Basically what we're going to want to do is to create a NURBS primitive, actually curve tool, EP curve tool. And I should have done the option box. So let's go here, curve tool, option box. I'm going to choose the linear. And then we're going to make a box that looks something like this. So I was just snapping to each grid, but it ends up creating a box for us. And we can see that we have the points and basically we're creating a curve one dimensional so that way it doesn't have any actual curving it's going to be straight lines and then that first point was actually off I didn't snap to grid but the rest of them I can snap to grid because you can see they have the they're at zero or one that first one was just slightly off so it's at zero but one and a tiny bit or negative one and a tiny bit so what we're going to want to do is create a curve so mc.curve and then we'll call this or we'll set the dimensions equal to one and then we're going to set points and let's look at how the points are done here so if we look at the command documentation we should have example of how it creates a curve so it's basically a list of set of coordinates which is great for us so we're going to say p equals and then we're going to set brackets and inside of here we're going to set a set of coordinates so we have one so we'll have it start off one two three four five we need five different ones so it's one, two, three, four, and five. So what I want to do, I'm going to create it vertically rather than flat on the grid. So I'm not going to use the same coordinates that we have right there. And it goes in order. Each of these points is going to be the first one it creates. Then it creates a line between these two. And then it creates a line between these two. So it goes in order. So we know that. And we need an X, Y, and Z value. So let's start off with one comma, one comma zero. So that way it goes vertically in the Y. So it is going to be zero. Actually, let's set zero on the X. So we'll do zero here and we'll do one here. So it's gonna create like a point there. Then we want to go down. So we're gonna do the same numbers here for the next one except on the y it's going to be negative one so that's how we know we're going down to that negative value 
then we want it to go over to the other side so we can copy this put it here and it's going to be negative on the Z then we want it to go up so it's going to be the same thing here but with a positive Y value and then let's paste it and it's just going to be positive and positive because we're going to end off exactly where we started off so the first one and the last one should be exactly in the same spot so let's see this right now it's just the function so it's a blueprint but we know the code is at least not have a syntax error but we need to call this command so we'll call create c TRL. There we go. And I think I did create it in the wrong axis because I want it to be facing this way. So that's pretty easy to fix. So basically all the Z values are going to go where the X values were. So this is going to be 1 and then this is going to be 0. And then this is going to be negative 1. This is going to be one. It's going to be negative one. Oops, I put one. It should be zero over here. And this one should be zero. And one. And zero. All right, let's try this again. There we go. And it should be facing in the same way as our character. Cool. That is good. So the next thing I want to be able to do is have a circle in it. So let's create a NURBS circle so that we can see the command. We can see that the command is here. The NR is the direction, uh, the normal direction. So it's the Y is where it's pointing. What we're going to want to point it towards is the Z. And we're creating it at the center. That's good. And then um, the radius is going to, we want it to be smaller because right now it is setting a radius of one. And that's why if we were to look at it in a bit of a angle here, you could see that it actually fits right up to the edge of the circle. But we want it to be smaller so that way it fits inside of that square. So let's take a look at doing that in... Python. So we're going to say mc dot circle. It's going to create it at the origin. So that's fine. What I want is nr equals said z. So it's going to be 0 comma 0 comma 1. And let's see if that's enough for what we're doing here. Invalid syntax because I don't have a parentheses there. Let's try that again. Yay! So that works. And then we just we need to bring the radius down. So let's say radius equals 0.1. Let's try that. And that works. It's probably a little bit small. Let's try 0.25. There we go. I like that. So this works. Right now, the circle is going a bit more than what we want because we want it to stop at the edge right there. And when we move it up, we'd want it to go all the way up to 1, which would bring it there. So what we would do is add the radius onto each one of the values of this box. So that way we know it fits properly when we bring the controller value to 1. So the radius is 0.25. So 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25. OK. So let's try that now. And the box is a little bit bigger, but when we bring it up to the edge, it's not going to be perfect right now, but we will limit it. You'll see that it's like pretty much to one. So that's good. OK, 
Great. So we have a box. Actually, let me run this again. We have a box that's going to be kind of our range of movement. So that way, visually, you can see where you can go when you're doing the controls. So with these objects here, we want to be able to take the and the attribute editor. If we go here, limit information. We want to be able to limit the translate in the X from negative one to one, and then the Y from negative one to one. And then in the Z, we are going to make it zero all the way. So when we do that, it's going to allow us to, even if we pull it past that point, won't bring it past the box. So how do we do that? We can say that we have the transform limits command and we have the range X. Oh, but that was for the rotate X. We were looking at the translate values. So negative one, one EX, and it tells us the name of the object. If we're creating multiple of these, we won't necessarily know the name of the object. So we're going to have to figure out a different way to get the name of the object. And later on in a future lesson, we'll actually set a specific name for each one of them, but they'll all be different. So we need to procedurally be able to figure that out. So let's do MC dot transform limits. And let's look at the Python example of this. So translate X. That's good. And then this is enabling the limits or disabling them. So we need a, the TX that will give us the minimum and maximum values for each one of the transforms. And then we need to see if there's a maximum limit that we can have, like it stops you once you get to those limits. So we have to make them true and true. So let's do TX and we're going to say negative one comma one, and it should be a TX equals. And we also need to tell it what the object name is. So Let's say that this is our square is equal in case we need it. And then this is our, let's do circle CTRL. And then let's comment this for a second. And let's see what we get with the circle CTRL since we're going to be using it right now. So we can clear this and then run this again. And we can see that we get two objects, the shape name, the transform and the shape, I believe. So the make node and the transform node. So those are what we're getting right now. So when we are calling the name, we can't bring in the list of both of those items. So we're just going to say circle CTRL bracket zero comma and then we're limiting the TX and then let's say enable TX is equal to true and true okay we're just going to check with the X right now so let's get rid of these and run this I need to say equals here. Let's try that again. There we go. So here we're limited in X. That's exactly what we want. Right now Z is not limited. I mean Y or Z. So we can keep on doing that there. So I'm just going to go here. Actually, we can go further. So we need to add a comma here. And it's going to be ty is equal to negative 1, 
comma one enable ty is equal to true and true tz is going to be equal to zero comma zero and then enable tz is going to be equal to true and true and i am missing a comma here there we go so let's clear this and check that that is great so we can not go in the z at all we can go in the y and we can go in the X and it's all limited. So if we go here, we can go anywhere in that box. If we go here, we're not going to go outside of the box. So that's good for our control. That's what we want. Now that we have that, let us go ahead and set up a group for ourselves of these. So we're going to say, MC that group and then we're gonna take square zero with circle CTRL and then let's say give it a name equals our right now we'll just call it face control. We'll change that later for each individual part but this will give us an idea of how it's working. So if we oops, look at that inside of our outliner, we have this, we have an error line nine, no object matches C. So that means for the square, it's not actually a group. It's an individual object. So let's test that. And then this one should be zero. Let's try that. There we go. It's all grouped properly. So the reason for that is if we go ahead and print square, it's different than what we had with the circle. So the circle had the make node and the transform node, whereas with the square, it only had the curve itself. It didn't have the make node at all. So we just treat it slightly different because of that. Okay. And it should be called face control. We created two of them. So one is face control one. That is fine, but they should work the same. Yep. And all the curves are in there. We could set names and things for that, but we'll wait until we're naming them for individual parts for our face. But that is the basics of the control later on we'll add some color and a name over here for each body part but yeah we'll end it here and in the future we'll add the body part here and we'll set colors for these items also and we'll template this so that way it's not selectable because you only want it to select this object here all right but that's the basic control that we're going to use so we're going to actually bring that in in future lessons to here so that way we can build individual controls for the different items that we have so we have the head right here so we'll have the jaw the eyes the brows maybe cheeks maybe ears we'll see what we'll do but that way we can add individual controls that we can grab and move for all those different elements that we're trying to work with all right, so that's it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.